Hey guys, it's Alyssa and Jesse, and welcome to another morning on our homestead. As you can see, we have our excavator in the background, and we thought we were done with the excavator. We planned to only get it for one day, and in that day we wanted to dig our barn footings and dig our hole for our septic percolation test and something else. But long story short, we were supposed to dig more than one hole, and we were supposed to do it when the inspector is here. So I think we read the paperwork, and even before we started digging, Jesse said, hey, bring me that paperwork. I want to make sure um, to see if we need one hole or two holes, and we read it, and it said, in this little boxy here, let us know where your hole is going to go. But then other places in the paperwork it said holes. So we went in to ask, and it's two holes, and we need to do that when the inspector's here. <laughs> so that's okay. Um, we said we wanted to share all parts, all parts of this journey, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So this is just a small hiccup. Um, hopefully it's not a big deal. We should have the inspector back out here in maybe an hour and a half, and she'll dig the holes with us and let us know um, where they need to go. Hopefully the one hole's good. And then she's also going to look at the drainage and things like that. I'm thinking that we might want to get some t-shirts that say <laughs> septic rookies. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could start a new baseball team, the septic rookies or something. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty poopy team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so a little confusing. Um, you know what? That's why we're documenting this journey mm -hmm. because uh, honestly, right now, if you're watching this video and you're going to go through this process, we can save you Some around mistakes, 280 yep. bucks worth of excavator rental fees and um, quite a bit of time because um, we actually thought we'd have uh, we'd be moving forward with the um, septic system right now. Um, instead, we're sitting around waiting for the inspector to come. On a positive note, it kind of worked out because we've got a lot of other jobs for the excavator to mm -hmm. do. We kind of called in the Mayday the National Guard of Rock Delivery. <laughs> yep. They made a made a we need more rocks. So they're gonna hopefully get that delivered this afternoon. Yeah. So we're gonna be busting our busting our home. A few today. days ago or a week ago, I think it was over the weekend when we had the excavator, we only had <clears throat> eleven yards of the three quarter minus rock delivered. Yeah. And that did the kind of the top of our driveway, but I think we're getting two or three more yeah. which will finish the bottom of the driveway where our barn's gonna go. And then everything behind us has been uh was it box scraped? I think well, that's it's been the, scraped. The, but it's been scraped. That's yeah. the technical wordage. Yeah. So we have nothing but dust. Yeah. Even so, worse than it was before. We so were planning it works on out. we were planning on bringing the three quarter rock in anyway, but um, it got kind of expedited because we weren't planning on getting an excavator until after the septic was installed, and we were going to do some tidy up work around the property. But mm -hmm. at this point, we might as well just go ahead and do that work now, and then we'll have the uh, septic crew do all their tidy yeah. up work themselves. We were going to kind of try to save a little bit of money on the septic installation by doing some of the post work because they can they would have to come back out after it's inspected and do the burying of the entire system and we could do that ourselves to save a few dollars and we had a bunch of other work well all that's kind of going down the drain yeah. so this kind of proves that you can plan as good as you can plan but reality may deviate from your plan so definitely don't get too grouchy you know the excavator's fun it kind of wears out after about five minutes but um, you know, we'll get the work done. And so, yeah, we're excited to kind of, you know, talk to the inspector and kind of bring you some information. We're going to try to ask the questions that we would want to have answered. And hopefully they're they're good for you, too. They, they make sense and they're helpful for you um, if you take this journey, too. So that's about it. historic system that maybe wasn't oh, the best. <laughs> yeah, so prior to permitting, you know, people just did with what they had, you know, so sure. whether that was into an abandoned buried vehicle, or sometimes I've seen a straight pipe, you know, into a creek. And so a lot of those that's not going to properly treat your effluent, you know, and mm -hmm. it can just impact public health and the environment. And so that's really why we're here and why we're doing what we're doing. I know right. um, it can see like a lot of hoops to jump through, yep. but um, it really is for a reason. And I really enjoy this area and I want to keep it that way. I want to keep it safe for, you know, generations to come. Right. So basically the permitting process isn't to like, you know, you're not a criminal. They don't need to come out and tell you that you can do something that you probably could do on your own. But it's really a, a public service to help uh, property owners make sure both they themselves are, you know, managing their property well, disposing of their wastewater properly, but also to help you with your neighbors too. Because Generally speaking, in this area, neighbors are very, you know, uh, colloquial. They they work together, so nobody's really going to damage. But 
but if you had somebody who maybe did buy a property and maybe didn't have those interests who didn't really care um, this would help to um, inhibit or prohibit somebody like that from doing damage mm -hmm. to both your property their property and ultimately the area so it's a service to help us keep what is beautiful beautiful and um, there's a, a lot of knowledge I think that, that the inspector has here that can help the homeowner uh, shorten the curve because if we try to do a lot of this on your own sure you can be a DIYer but there's a lot of risks that go with that and so um, you know utilizing the service of the state to, to come out and take a look at this or I guess it's the county for us but mm -hmm. um, to come out and take a look at this and give us an honest assessment really shortens the curve to getting a proper system um, we've heard you know stories of people putting septic in and then it fails within five years or ten years mm -hmm. so I mean this the sheer cost but then yeah. there's no way to tally up the environmental cost mm -hmm. if there was somebody maybe to put in an inappropriate system. You were mentioning mm -hmm. dumping it straight into surface water. I'm trying to think if there's any other questions. Um, you know, for us, uh, we paid a fee to have uh, the permit issued or have the site evaluation and the permit issued. It was $860, which um, might seem like a lot of money, I suppose, to some folks maybe who are on a super limited budget. Um, but you kind of have to see it as an investment in your property. My job is just to make sure that you have a functional safe system for as long as possible. Perfect. And then as far as the permitting process, maybe we can just share that with the viewers. It's pretty quick. Basically, you came out, we, we submitted an application. You, mm -hmm. you responded pretty quickly because you're, you're convenient that way. And um, came out and did a site evaluation. You've got kind of the data collected. You took some measurements. Mm -hmm. We kind of dug some test holes. A tip, try to do it if you can, if you can get the inspector to come out with you, excavator there. Okay. That helps because <laughs> that way, <laughs> that way um, you know, if they want a hole dug in a certain area, they're just trying to see if the soils are consistent. And so it's helpful to have the tool available. That way they can kind of get a, an honest assessment of the land. You could technically probably dig a couple holes, you come look at them, probably get the information, but may, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. Yeah, you um, run the risk if you don't have, you know, if you pre-dig the test holes, then you can run the risk of them being in kind of the wrong area. Then yeah. we have to look yeah. at more test holes. And then yeah. if you don't have an excavator on site, then it can just delay the process. You know? exactly. And then I have to come back out, which isn't a big deal, but it's just more time. It's more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to help the, the process go smoothly, our recommendation would be um, if you can coordinate with the inspector to have them come at a time when you can also have equipment available um, that'll shorten that curve too and it also makes just the whole data collection process go better I would yeah. say definitely be on site when the inspector is there that way they can kind of talk to you a little bit about the system if you've come, already done some research or maybe done some pre-design something like that and sometimes you have a more intimate knowledge of the the lay of the land to kind of share you know bodies of water um, things like that mm -hmm. to help the uh, inspector so yeah I have questions that come up and you know and then if you have any questions then hopefully I can answer them when I'm on site you know and we Perfect. can kind of work together to get a good plan of what to do you know where yeah. to put the system and then um, since I've done the site evaluation now I'll issue the permit and then as the homeowner you can install or um, have a licensed installer um, put it in then I'll come out and do one more inspection just to make sure it was installed correctly and then you can backfill and it's all buttoned up perfect yeah, and, and a big part of the permit is that uh, the inspector will kind of give us an idea on the square footage or the surface area of the um, the drain field so we know mm -hmm. the proper sizing and then there's also limitations on the length and also on the width so that can help you with the design because uh, it's really fundamental that you get that proper if it's too long or too too narrow too wide uh, the effectiveness probably just diminished so um, and she'll issue that with the permit so that our installer can mm -hmm. also help us then d discuss design components cost mm -hmm. all that stuff so it's also a service that yeah. way there and also we're starting permission. small with a barn and then ultimately we'll have a larger house so we're able to figure out mm -hmm. like a system that would grow with us right in our, our home and yeah, instead of some, something inadequate that might mm -hmm. have to be expanded mm -hmm. later, which would be particularly difficult. And that's another um, good consideration is to have a plan for the long term. You know, yeah. a lot of the times I'll get called out and that, you know, people have decided to build another house and you either do have to expand onto the existing system, which may or may not be feasible depending on where yeah. it's located, or you're looking at putting in a brand new system. So, you know, yeah. And as you all are doing, you're sizing it for, you know, everything that you want to do. And, it, mm -hmm. you know, at worst case, if you don't, build everything then you have just more capacity yeah. which is you know just going to give you a longer life for the system perfect yeah and then the final inspection she comes out and that's really a service i think too because if you hire a contractor you want to hire a good contractor you want to maybe mm -hmm. check references make sure you know who's doing your, your work for you uh, but also a service to make sure that the that the it's all installed properly because if it's not that's a fantastic time to fix it before everything gets <laughs> yeah. buried so if there yeah. is an issue even if it's a small issue maybe the the elevation change from one end of the drain field to the other or some small oversight which happens in in contracting um, perhaps the inspector could do a service there and catch it early and then it'd be a much easier fix at that point in time than maybe having failure maybe some sort of joint or something were to come disconnected down the road something like that yeah. happened
Yeah, if the, you know, if the pipe that connects the septic tank and the drain field isn't mm -hmm. properly bedded, you can get a bow and, you know, then, then you don't have any effluent ever reaching your drain field, it's going to back up into your house. So just like simple things like that, or if it's not installed level, then you can have a failure. Um, so there are things to consider and that's what we check and uh, not to mention yeah. just that it's sized properly again. You know. um, so yeah, and then after that, it's we also do a record drawing of the system so you can find it in the future if you need to. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, thank you for, for taking yes, time with us. Oh, yeah, First of all, helping us with the system, but <laughs> yeah. also for volunteering to do a, just a little bit of video for us. We hope mm -hmm. that the people watching can benefit from our mistakes and yeah. the experience. Well, not hopefully, you know, I don't think you guys have made any mistakes. No big boo boos. Uh, They're more comical <laughs> than anything. Just happened to be a, a laugh, a I guess. So. Process, yeah. yeah. Okay, Perfect. well, thanks, guys. Yes. Yeah. Appreciate I'm your sorry, time. My hand I did oh, I'm sorry, my hands are covered. I'm going to be filthy. Yeah, so. this is my life in the summer. So. All right, so mission accomplished. It looks like our inspector has approved our property here and the site plan, so we're good to go. She's gonna get the permit to us straight away and we can get started on digging trenches and holes and things for our septic system. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Sorry about the weird camera angles when you're working out in dirt and big piles of rock. It's not the easiest thing to do to run a camera as if it's not already hard work already. So bear with us, we'll make the best we can out of these videos. And if you're enjoying them, please follow us on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive all of our new videos. We'll be posting a lot about our off-grid homestead. We're going to talk a lot about our septic system, timber framing, a lot of other interesting subjects. Uh, if you like Facebook or Instagram, we're also posting mini posts on there. So don't forget to follow us over there. And we'll see you in the next video.